time together or mm. in fellowship or in teaching to you. Mm. Lord, we thank you for our brother Emmanuel, Lord, mm. the place that you have set him, Lord, in the flow and the continuation of your purpose, Lord, even in our lives. Lord, I thank you for the wisdom that you have imparted to him, Lord, that he imparts to us. Lord, the very wisdom of your word, life and spirit. Lord, I pray that it would manifest itself within our lives. Lord, would not simply pass through us. Lord, but that would saturate within us. Lord, I pray for the minds and hearts during this meeting. Lord, especially those Lord, that are younger like myself. Lord, and my brothers and sisters. Lord, I pray that we would, even with not complete understanding in the mind of everything that is shared, I pray that all things will be Lord, considered, Lord, and dwelt upon within the heart and the spirit. Thank you, Father. Lord, that it would be fruitful to us. Thank you, Father. Lord, spiritually beneficial to each of us, Lord, our destiny and your purpose. Mm. Lord, I pray that for every life of this people and our group, Lord, and your sons as a whole, that we would continue to align ourselves with the standard of your truth, Lord, and your righteousness. Lord, and cut off all things that do not fall in line, Lord, with your way of life, Lord, that being the ways of this world, or the mindsets of man, Lord, I pray that you would give us discernment to recognize these things, Lord, and act upon them so that we may live in your life with full truth, Lord, and with all of our spirit, Lord, and every part of us. So, Lord, I pray these things in your name. Amen. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. Please be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The Salam, Anamam, Yelling Amam. John, do you have anybody checking? No, not yet. Well, let's just then go on. So, turn with me to Psalm 53. Hallelujah. In second verse now. The God looks down from heaven on the songs of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. As Paul later quoted this verse in the book of Romans, he's talking about the sin and the reconciliation into power off. God, back to God into a life righteousness that is the Son of God. He said, Every one can turn away and all together they have become corrupted. There's no one who does good, not even one. So, in appropriating this contest recently we have introduced through the foundational teaching uh, talking about what is a sin and the, a life in sin means and what is the freedom what life of liberty through sonship means and uh, in a big contest however there is one word that continue to pop up to through the verses again again to designate the characteristic of God's people, God's willing people, chosen people. That is a heart who understand. So what they understand is recently again team adequately expanded and pinpointed this understanding is pertaining to a lifestyle. A lifestyle planted in the heart of the ways of God but expressed through a certain culture. We use the word culture. Again, we emphasized that the word is a modern word equivalent to the Bible word or in the times we're talking about the kingdom. Amen? For kingdom in the old times, more than just a hierarchy, garments or the dominion have a, a ruler per se, but it's a lifestyle. It's a civilization. It's a civilized life organized, expressed in certain ways. And we know through the teaching, even team and being with you, we found for you 
as scripture different ages we see God is intended to all his people to be cultured in a certain way and culture and culture is sourced expressed educated and eventually uh, become a, a, a educational center in a sense and it's the school it's where you teach other people amen hallelujah than way of God and this will of God embodied in the law of Moses last few sessions we did it Jesus Christ as one who come to fulfill <coughs> this, this desire of God through the age with a hidden mystery a hidden thing because sin and the wilderness man had robbed mankind the privilege to be restored into the culture so in that way we know it was symbolically then is expressed and the separation from God the, all the uh, denial to this privileged life through the casting away of mankind from the Garden of Eden. Amen? Hallelujah. Where the entrance back to that place was guarded by angels. Amen? Hallelujah. And uh, it was with a sword, with a fire, with all kinds of judgment, basically. So when Jesus Christ restored the way back, amen, one picture we know in ceremonial and also in physical manifestation of this restoration was that there was a temple on the mount and this day was, was shaken. Amen? Was literally breaking the ground and the veil said it was torn asunder. And what is inside that, where the ark of life is, life, glory, the ark of the covenant is, was that amazing. There's no presence of God. There's no glory of God. There's no law of God in this place. So, in a sense, what happened in the physical is only a picture of what happened in the heavenlies. So, where the ark then it is revealed, where then order is in suit for us, actually, in the few days ahead, later rather, sorry, that Jesus Christ resurrected and ascended. Amen? Three days later, he ascended, and we know, according to some understanding, uh, that it fully expounded by the author Hebrew as Jesus Christ adequately talked about. I will restore this content to you. I will want you, Peter, John, and the early disciples, I want you to be servants, to be fellow sons of God to minister this, this thing. And it's about building a culture. Last week's session we were speaking about Jesus Christ came. He restored, restored mankind to this privileged life that we are sons of God, can enjoy the grace that was originally in the beginning with God's creation and the intended man to be the recipient and the glorification, the embodiment, the expression of this glory. Amen? We were talking about the pattern life, the sonship, basically. Amen? But it was, uh, was not able to express because the sin and darkness wield mankind from this pattern life. When Jesus came, he restored more than the source for us, us access to it. Amen. This we back where angels cannot dismiss us anymore. Amen. According to this, Peter and John and 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 uh, and, and even Apostle Paul said, angels are mere um, you know servants of this. They long to actually look into these things. Amen. Long to actually uh, zealous of us be able through Christ Jesus to pertaining uh, to attain unto this life. Amen? Putting this wave of restoration. And that being said, so what is and is lost? If it is a privileged access to a certain way, a lost economy, a lost culture in a certain way, then hold that being restored. And we see Jesus Christ saying, I come to teach you this will of God, this business of God. So more than we are restored to have access to this thing, we are actually um, called, just like a man in the beginning, are called to be ministers, amen, of these things. We are more than to express through our life as we partake in his divine nature, become just like him. But actually we have business to teach all creation of these things, amen. We have the grace, we have the original intent of God when he created us for this 
ministry for this governmental and educational, if you use that word, priestly duty and kingly duty. Amen? Kingly responsibility. Now that being said, so if we don't have this being possessed, practiced by us, it's been in us, and then we don't have it being instructed. Amen? Hallelujah. Then what do we have to offer to others? Evidently that's not the case. Jesus said, no, you go in my stead. Go in my name. Teach them of this way. Baptize them into this life. Amen? And all authority, power on earth and in heaven have been given to me for this enabling this service or entrustment this service. And I will now leave you as orphans so that you know that I always on your on your backup. I always will supply to you this grace. Amen? Hallelujah. So in essence, we see this entrustment, this wheel of teaching, of a wheel of life, what look like. Amen? Often, uh, I want to do some clarification recently. Tim has some work good discussion about the fallacy or the fractured or the limitations, if we can. That is a gospel and the, the kind of vision of life that is being indoctrinated or teached in different times of church church age, am right? So Amen, Hallelujah. See, they're not able to understand the heart grows dull or even blinded from a, this vision or this image, this pattern of life. Amen, Hallelujah. The word image is actually the word model or pattern. It's the same word actually. Amen. It's something you make a copy of. Amen? Hallelujah. Something you wear a model, you look which you make a cookies, what do you do? <laughs> you cast into a model. Am I cast into a shape? Then every cookie of the same shape. So when God casts us into his image, he more than for us to be this raw, it goes through a process to be baked, to be then eatable. Amen. In a sense he wants us to all the ingredients all the makeup of man, amen, that is, in, uh, is to be glorified through our understanding in the Holy Spirit as we saturate and partake in the spiritual life. That is why Jesus Christ becomes the food for us. Amen. He is a teaching, he is a bread from heaven. He is a teaching, he is a water of life. Amen. His teaching is a new why from the better covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. Making sense to you guys? Amen. And uh, so, Again, back to see this 53 chapter in two words. So it says, All the Son of Man to see if there anyone who understands, who seek God. Oftentimes, again, the fallacy or the limitation was cast that is seeking God merely for sinners seen by grace. I have a, you know, God no longer going to be angry with me anymore, no longer going to punish anymore. I'm doing good. He pat on my shoulder. He he praised me a little bit. We have a little happy party. <laughs> Sorry, just talking. And uh, we forgot. God is a mighty God. God has a lot of things that He can share and establish us. He wants us to to labor to serve Him in those capacities. Amen. Hallelujah. Often, a uh, false humility actually is pride. False humility is another form of pride. Actually, through the church age, the gospel said, "Oh, that's pride that you can labor with God in such confidence that you can actually identify with His will, doing His work with a conscious agreement." Amen. What's such a lie? Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Romans 12. I know we uh, preceded this scripture in different times, different places, but this one I want you to narrow down. The transformation of mind, what it means to know the will of the Father, what it means. Amen. Hallelujah. What is this understanding is about the will of the Father? What is it about? Amen. This is a lifestyle, this is a culture, this enforcement. What is it about? And is this pertaining to our topic? It is what kind of family, Amen. God intended to produce through His uh, Son, through His creation. Amen. Through the work of Jesus Christ and His Church. Turn with me to, Amen. Hallelujah. What am I talking about? I totally Romans twelve. Okay, Romans twelve. Yes. Romans twelve. 
So this transformation, this wheel, you can see there's a lifestyle here. First, the context. The twelve speaking about a worship system, a way that there is a service, there is a there is a there is a education, there is this uh, a class of people be set apart to minister, and in order to enter into that benefit, everyone required to understand and practice a life, a certain kind of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now in Romans 12 now. Amen. Hallelujah. Then said in the word beginning, I urge you brothers, in will God's mercy to offer your earthly life. Amen. Let's not use this physical body. Amen. That's often this may come true. And, but this is this enabling of this image of God's life through your human existence, if you can, can see it. But not enlightened and reproduced, regenerated by the Holy Spirit yet. So Paul said, "Okay, now ready that life, make that life a willing vessel, amen, a willing sacrifice to enter into a work, to embrace a work through a faith, amen, by applying a faith, a belief in the calling of God through the gospel, amen, the hope of glory, amen, hallelujah, so as living sacrifices." Amen. Hallelujah. Holy and pleasing to God, so God don't dismiss you. You see the pattern that I express the Levitical order in the sacrificial system that if a lamb has blemish, is dirty, not well groomed, well raised, not well prepared, basically, um, you know, you can't have default. You God's supposed to bring the firstborn to the best part of the flock. Amen. The best part of your life. Amen. So speaking about so holy and pleasing to God, and God said, "Oh, that's pleasing to me. That is, I like that." Am right? So and uh, so is our life, the passion, the zeal, the expectations, the hope of our life, the aspiration of our life, meant to be landed and expressed in a different vision of life, which is the will of God. We're talking about. There is a culture for embrace. I'm going to expand a little bit today, receive from uh, Mary Tong's scriptures, but I want to carry on. The important for you to understand what the teaching is more than just a lofty talk. It's very practical, it is very relevant to what we do, it's very relevant, especially young mind, young life, to grow up, to understand, appreciate it. I will explain to you more for your mind to understand the concepts of God's culture. Amen. Holy place that this your spiritual act of worship or service or ministry or whatever work you do for God. So then he said, do not conform any longer. Just deal away with the old life. To the pattern of this world. We recently disbanded the patterns, it's a culture of this world, if I can use that word. Amen. How this world is organized. How this world has has uh, its joys, the sorrows, the sense of the loss, the gains, the, its right, the wrongs, all that entail, its moral standards, its <coughs> ideals, its whatever. You know, whatever good or bad. Amen. Hallelujah. The pattern of this life. And then be transformed. This transformation taking place by a renewing of your mind. So when somebody comes around, only our spirit is going to renew our mind, only da da da, da da da, da da da, all kinds of things basically refuse to engage a cultural way for this life being nurtured, which is totally discredited to the way how God set it up. Amen. Hallelujah. He won in the Old Testament through priesthood, from those who know his way, learn his way, establish his way to teach others. Amen. From parents, Older generation, the next generation. Amen. Let the word never depart from your heart. And then in the New Testament, through discipleship, through a different way of a community life, through the church, the elected ones who are establishing God. Amen. Sometimes we readily embrace the fivefold or different kinds. Of, we have all kinds of passion for that. But we don't necessarily understand God's family culture. God wants us to live out as a song. Amen. Hallelujah. To the unbeliever, to the one who is not belong to the thought, 
you are supposed to assume a certain capacity, amen? God authorized to send you out to do certain things. But who the believing ones, who is already given access to the table of the Lord, who are always in his household, what kind of thing you do? Every day you prophesy with one another, <laughs> be an apostle to one another, or you fellowship and learn the will of God. Be a student, amen? So this table of life is ever... Um, culture. Discipleship is a culture. Discipleship cannot become merely um, expressed in so-called government capacity in a hierarchy or in a lesson to me. You know, I'm better than you. I'm more honorable than you. But rather who knows God better and all fellowship together in that light. Amen? Hallelujah. But there has to be a determination with each heart and mind to willingly let go the old ways of your life is uh, organized, inspired, and expressed. Amen? Hallelujah. And found that abundant life, that the pleasure of life, that the fulfillment life in the gospel, in the way how Christ told us. Amen? And assembly that, then you are to teach others, to serve others with the same nurturement, the nourishment, the same life. So how that takes place, the sign that this takes place, and the fundamental work that takes place is the transforming uh, of your life through the renew your mind. Again, come back to the point why I did this loop emphasize is that the renewing of the mind continue to be resisted by God's people. <laughs> so God said, I want to know, I were scarce I found one actually understands me. We're few. We're few. Amen? Allah, through the ages we know it's we're few. But when they really understand me, then I will change their mind. I will teach them my ways. My ways are higher than your ways. Amen? Hallelujah. I will taught, teach you as one, amen, of my song, not as any other capacity. In last few introductions, Sessions, we I mentioned this uh, transition from one mode to another of ministry of God. Amen. One is um, that in the past, before Christ came, the fatherhood of God was not able to be expressed through the ministry of man. Even it was shadowed, prophesied, well documented through through in certain ways, but it was not allowed to be expressed allowed to be ministered. Amen? And when Christ came, what happened? This change, this was fully opened up. Amen? This new relationship man, between God began to be formed. We call it father-son relationship. Upon this rock, I will build my church. But that relationship is to be nurtured, built up, established through education. What if we use the word in modern world, we use education, but in the past, it's called discipleship. This discipleship is through a culture, through a culture. Let's learn, at the essence of this culture is to be, have one job, that is, express God's heart, God's way, and also to each individual, there will be the renewing of the mind taking place. Amen. Hallelujah. I see that we're evidently happening to Noah's life in the past couple of years, as he grew, he allowed God to experience certain things, and, but all those are channels, all those things are tools to a better transformation. And the better transformation was that he fulfilled the old earthly vision and the spiritual life, really see who God is, and really want his whole life to be able to serve the Lord, not because of excitement, not because it seems right, seems good, but he begins to see the truth of the world, not because the gift or your spiritual eyes open. You really begin to embrace the culture, embrace and express and honor that culture, and willing to practice that culture, and let go all other conditions, traditions, or whatever the way of man, where we build our pride, our conventions, our little ideas, our little world in it, and pick a big me there. I'm my own God, in my own making. My life belongs to me. My God is support me. God is to help me. God, me, 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 hallelujah. And then has to take a death blow. Now that regardless who it is, they're going to have a hard time for this transition. 
And God is a little bit cruel in this. Amen? <laughs> He's a little bit cruel in this. He doesn't care what you think is good or bad. He has a one way, has one word, has one call. Hallelujah. In, I know it's challenging, but be challenged by God so that you quickly change your life. Especially young man. It's going to be a very hard transition. The reason is you have very beautiful people around you. Your life is well formed in a certain way. You're comfortable. You feel supported. You don't go through hardship life. You don't reckon the deeper things of God. But those are going to come. Beautiful things that God don't necessarily dramatize that situation. He wants us to have a gentle flow. Amen? He don't necessarily want us it this to be done like a flower, like a like a mighty shaking. Amen? He wants you to receive the morning dew. Hallelujah. Uh, now me pray for us in this regard. Amen. Lord, I pray and thank you for Lord, your, your love for us, Lord. Your love for your people. Lord, I thank you for, for the mighty work you are doing in each one's lives. Lord, I pray that you would Lord, just continue to, Lord, to speak to us and show us your ways, mm. your power, or your understanding. So that they, that we would change our perspective of life, Lord. Mm. Lord, in your perspective. Lord, I pray for this meeting today, Lord, that you would just be with each one. Mm. Calm our minds, our souls, mm. our hearts, Lord. But I thank you for, for your blessings, Lord. Mm. In your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8, uh, 12, continue. Then you, when your mind changes, you change your lifestyle, you change the culture you're planted in, you change how your understanding and wisdom is nurtured. Amen. You learn a different way. You become a disciple of a different culture. A student, a different education, I can tell you. And then you will be able, with that education, back you up, you build a, some foundational things, you're able to test and prove what God's will is. It's a good, pleasing, and perfect will. So there's a, this work. And then you can see when you determine to change your life, then something taking place in you that your mind changes accordingly. After your mind changes, you are enabled to do something else that is something very interesting. And you will understand something. And that process, Paul speaking, pertains to God's will. You see, oftentimes we think the reverse order, especially the church age teachings, is that, oh, God wants you to be sinner saved by grace. I know you want to have a no doing nothing wrong in here and this God is going to embrace you. He's, he's beautiful children. You have a beautiful life forevermore in the heavenly realms. You know, you never die. You have all these beautiful things, no sin, no sorrow, whatever. All good. Blissful life. Well, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but, but that basically describes <laughs> the essence of God. More than they thank you. Uh, the church thank you. I mean, the church people thank you. I mean, that's not more than through the ages, that's what we think. That's young believers think. But that's not the gospel. Nor is that transformation work that Paul referred to here. Amen? Hallelujah. What Paul here talking about, actually, you see, it's reversed. It's not that you know God's will, don't want to be a sinner, <laughs> to have a good life, a righteous life, holy life in God. He wants you to have a a change life fundamentally, educate differently, think differently, aspire differently, enabled to do certain things, and that thing that it is God's will. Have you think about that? So what then God's will is, if it's not merely pertaining to salvation? Amen. So this is important. And this education 
has to happen for you to grasp this will. Amen? Hallelujah. And then the education will enable you to do two things, to test and approve. Have you tried something to test approve something? Give me an example. You test approve a theory. You experiment time and again and again. Look at the light bulb, you know the story of Edison, right? <laughs> the invention he tests the salt and materials in order for his theory, his faith in this light generating whatever, you know, mechanics, whatever, instrument can prove to be right. Now, how many times you try and fail? I mean, test and approve, what he did, he test and approve what kind of material can you use. Finally, found the carbon, you know, burn thing actually better than any other material. He thought, that's going to work. Gold, the silver, my try, am I? So, am I? Hallelujah, other materials. In a mini precious thing, he must try. It. But he found that in this most common, you know, so. and then that is not stay there. Goes on, we know, and uh, move on. Today we have a different kind of material. I have been proved and tested and proved a better material for light bulb. Am I? Today we don't even need that material for the light to be generated because the laser certain thing can happen. I'm making sense to you guys. So in testing the proving, something is meant to be attained onto. You intend onto this light, this process is generating light. So you intend onto do what? In this effort to do what? To know God's will. To know the light. Now, there are few men understand. It's very interesting. I know it's very discouraging. <laughs> there are few men through the generations really understand why they are created. What the call of God have on their life. Or they heard it, they brush aside. They treat it as a common. And they tag along. They let man's tradition, they let their own business, they let their own other endeavors, and, and this tag away. There's a reason the Bible emphasize this man of old prophet Elisha then he honored Elijah there's a reason why Peter was a Peter you see they had a totally different picture of the Christians <laughs> there's a reason Mary in the song this lesson alabaster jar we about to break the most precious thing there's a, there's a different pattern of a life <laughs> One seek it with all his heart and treat it as a highly surprise of life. Until you have that, everything we do is a sham. Until we have that, everything to do is our own quote-unquote good works, but not a real inspire, transpire uh, understanding of God's will in the heart. Amen. I know this is a very discouraging to us, but let me tell you something. When God touched your life, when God really revealed and you commit and you deck your life to that thing, nothing can stop you. And I like uh, Oswald Chambers speaking a little preaching mode today because young people are facing, you have doubts. Why I do this? Well, if this do this for you to spend a good time together, uh, then there's no use. You know, there's other people begin to scatter around. I, I don't want to, to gather together in the sense of teacher topic. It has to be practiced through uh, people, uh, understanding people. And this word will never pass away. It doesn't matter, man, like it or not. Welcome it or not. It, it does not. It's not up to you to judge it. And actually, when it revealed, it ministered to you, you will be alive. Better like Peter, like Elisha. <laughs> Better do that. Understand this is the most precious thing, valuable for us in Greece. Tim, lay hands on Elijah and, and pray for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
So in Jesus' name, we come, become a new people. And I will tell you, I will tell you, uh, this, this teaching that I'm now unfolding is one of the most hidden things through the ages. It's not easy to be embraced. In the days to come, you understand when you begin to learn the deeper things of the Lord. The beauty of it is, right now you have accepted to it. You're able to enjoy the perspective of it. Hallelujah. You're able to consider it and you wear it and prepare your life in it. Some people, your children, you have beautiful parents. But your parents don't cast them in the light, it's kind parents, good parents, God-loving parents. You really need to embrace them as one who is upholding, doing the whole life, whole passion, try to make a life of God, the calling God actualized through their life with you and for his people. Amen. Hallelujah. In the, the, the day, they first belong to God, so he, they want you to first belong to God. Amen. To know God. Amen. Hallelujah. If that is not the first condition of your relation with your parents, then you're going to take a long time, a lot of conversing to come back to that point to reckoning. And this is why I have my parents. This is why God chose them, called them. And this is why my parents helped me. This is why I'm called and, and, and have a different life in God. Making sense to you? Amen. Hallelujah. So the test in the pro is not an easy thing. And it pertaining to a word, particular thing, what that thing is? The will of God. The will of God. You see, for Elijah, for example, I mean, until Elijah went away. Elisha's life was in his head. He was basically a, a, a servant. I, I, know, I know that Elisha don't treat him very good. I mean, he's just one of the young men. You know? And uh, not very good in his own kind, but he does not move his life but, but the community of Elisha. <laughs> so, he move around, then Elisha followed. And Jesus moved around, Peter followed. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Means the disciples, or those are taught in this process, they are not the center of God's care. Amen? It's the way the ministry of God, hope, hope we don't get misled in this by anyone who don't have this call, actually. Amen? Try to charge on their own course. But there is this living way to serve something greater than any man's life. Has it been embraced? Amen. No one said I pray for that. Yeah. May God bless you. Amen. In your generation, raise you up to be a, a, a testimony for this. Amen. Hallelujah. Not that you have to do anything to me or Dan in particular. I'm talking about there is a higher expression of life, a greater life. And that's what Jesus wants to have and, and impart. Amen. To so any man who's willing to listen and, and have it. Go ahead. <coughs> Lord, I do thank you for this way, Lord, this destiny that you have set, Lord, in our lives, Lord, in this younger generation, Lord, the mighty things that you will do in and through us, Lord, the, the things that you want to do in and through us, Lord, I pray that first our, our hearts and our spirits will not only accept it, Lord, but would truly become one with it. Lord, that even our souls would follow behind, Lord, to have, Lord, a, a real burning desire within us, mm. Lord, to grab hold of it and be one with it, Lord, and live it out, Lord, not simply even just as a lifestyle, Lord, but for the very reason we live and exist, Lord, on this earth, Lord, and relate with others, Lord, th even those in our family, mm. Lord, those we meet throughout life. Lord, that every person you bring to us is not just out of circumstance, Lord, but out of your good and perfect will and your purpose. Lord, the things that you'd have us do with, Lord, and through these people, Lord, in this earth that continues to, Lord, dark, darken and fall, fall away from your heart and your purpose, mm -hmm. Lord, as it has over the ages. 
Lord, but you truly continue to raise up or have raised up a people that you call your sons. Mm. Lord, I thank you that we are these people. Lord, I pray that we would continue to be these people in Jesus' name. Mm. Lord, that we would live to be one with your purpose, Lord, mm. to fulfill it, Lord, mm. within our lives, Lord, and within the lives of your sons. Mm. So I pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Now, turn with me to continue the thing. So basically, then he qualified, Paul said, the good, pleading, perfect will of the Father. So then, talking about the whole, you belong to one body as different members. Each one have different portion grace, therefore you enjoy different function. The word here used actually the measure of faith. Paul used the word measure of faith. That actually is a little bit our own understanding because we especially charismatic said that by your faith you receive gifts. Put into that. Oh but that's not what Paul was talking about. Paul was talking about different members, they grew like a family, they have different capacities. Amen. I will not have Elijah move a mighty stone, am I? A mighty thing. I will not have Elijah to operate a, a large machine, am I? Like your dad right now operating. So why? Because he has not grew up to that yet. His capacity is limited. He has not grew the full measure of the stature of Christ. So he's still a weak member, a limited strength, limited ability. So I need to properly the life in a different way as of the end. So here he's speaking the same thing. Then you have different gifts with your different stage, different maturity in God, different capacity in God. You also have different gifts in God. So you serve as one people. This all in all is members, gifts, all actually is uh, expressed through a culture, a culture of people. Hallelujah. A different culture. Now then he said, in this culture, you have to practice a kind of relationship that is meant to be the flow and the life of this culture. Amen? Hallelujah. As one family and the people of God, which we try to do. We do it unconsciously. We do it in a word, uh, childish-like way, or sometimes imperfect way. But I pray as we move on this way forward, we'll see have a conscious identification, a conscious evaluation of my role in a bigger community as a member, a bigger member. Amen. Hallelujah. In that, you can see Paul's addressing a thing hindered certain believer to come to that grace, to come to that life. He said, "Do not think in street. Do not think yourself more highly than you are." A word more highly seems addressing pride actually means do not be presumptuous or realistic about your role, your placement in the body of Christ. Amen? Be abide in a peaceful way, in a loving way, in a helpful way, as one family. Amen? To learn to love one another differently as God's people. Thirty nine, he continued the same way in thinking. He said, love must be what? Sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to one the good. Devote to one another in what love? Amen. Brotherly love. Now the word love, brotherly love is translated again. Maybe it's confusing. It's talking about not just to man, to male, have a kind of brother, good friendship. That is, that's maybe true a little bit. <laughs> so, but because it's a hand around, most of it's young, young people, you know, young men. So in his time in ministry. But that's not what he meant. What he here actually meant is love others as a members of your same family because you have the same father. Amen? You have the same father, therefore you become a same, belong to one another as a brother. Amen? You belong to one member of the same household. Therefore, love as unto your own kinsman, as your own family member. Amen? Hallelujah. And let no other way of love still or infiltrate this weird relationship, this culture. I'm making sense here. And they go on, they honor one another above yourself. There you go, then we're lacking zeal, keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. But go on, here talking about how you deal with the outside garment in 813, in the beginning talking about the respect, trying to live in peace. But in the end, he said, continue back to this love. 
That means we of law in 13a said that no debt remaining outstanding except continuing debt to exercise brotherly love to one another. You have obligation to love one another because that is what God's law is about, what God's teaching is about. For he who loves his kinsman, members of God's household, amen, citizens of the kingdom, amen, this is a family culture, Paul, through and through, tried to admonish and educate the, 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 teach the disciples that he was ministered to, to weaken to it. What is the will of the guardian for you? To become a member of this household and become a citizen of this kingdom. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Therefore, being established, be nurtured as a young baby, grow up like a spiritual, with, you know, spiritual milk, mature in this way. Amen? As a body, those who serve, supposed to help one another mature in this way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then he said, this is a fulfillment. Now, the last few sessions, I used a, a key note of uh, topic that is Christ did not come here abolish the law. He said I come here to fulfill the law, fulfill the prophets. So what then the law the prophets? The cry of God, the zeal of God has been for them to be a kind of messenger, kind of education so that a people understand his way, understand his heart can be formed can be produced. Amen? They truly can become his people. He can be their God. They can live together in his righteousness, in his love, in his wisdom, always in all his goodness. Amen? Hallelujah. In all his goodness. So therefore, the fulfillment of the law, amen, is through this culture, amen, being expressed and fulfilled. <laughs> is that amazing? So it's not a personal fulfillment, per se. Jesus didn't come here to produce us, as I use the word, for the space man of God, you know, space holy man, per se. That's just through the church age of produces such people. And that this, you know, whether being a pope or being one come out in the desert, spend 20 years or something. <laughs> or someone so heroic go to a in land, try to you know, do all kinds of things to preach the gospel. But he telling us from everyday life, wherever you are, whatever placement you are in life, whatever station you are in life, be this member of God's household. And if God allow you, be plugged into assembly or community that understand the same thing. So church or community life is not a social construct. It's not to carry on natural tradition, natural relationship into this. He said, no, because the unique in this way, I can to help you to separate from the will of the world and learn my way, learn my culture, if that way is to be. Therefore, you see, the fulfillment is through this love, through this love that is characterized in this family culture. So the family culture of God or this discipleship is to teach how to love one another in the way the Father love can find a ready people. A people loves him, amen, and love one another. And this is a, a different kind of love. You can't enter a precious love until your heart agree, until your heart understand, until you let it go all other inspirations for life, all other pursue life, and test and prove this is actually God's will. This is God's will. And let go any other efforts in life, any other aspiration. It's very difficult. <laughs> no, it's difficult for me. Amen? Hallelujah. It's for, for me, the goodness of the Lord uh, other will not consider as a curse or this one did to me. The good thing is that he made me single. He made me an alien. He made me have no way to pursue those things. <laughs> I'm a caged in. 
I'm Zainibo, clean through you guys, embrace my life and, and hold with my life, I, and love God. So I'm able to quickly see, oh, oh, there is another family, there is another culture. I don't need to concern too much myself. Amen. Hallelujah. To be spend a dedicating this. Not that you all can be, uh, you know, praise me or be a better people in whatever light, but even that is wonderful and and really in my heart for in terms of serving you. But I understand this is a great pride for my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you imagine in Paul's testimony his life is using one person? It's quite understand the sacrificial life in this, but Paul understands this as well. He was locked up in Philippines, said many people abandoned him, his heart was torn down, you know, in between whether staying here or go to heaven with the Lord. But he said, For your good, I think I should remain. <laughs> A sacrificial life. A sacrificial life. Now, I know it's very hard to understand that until we begin to see the goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord, the wonderful heart God has for His people. Amen. And we have faith that our service in this end to this world purpose, this will of the Father, will never be in vain. Amen. Will never be in vain. It's never going to be forgotten. For He is more than prove us, He's a rewarder. Of our this faith, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Rachel, pray for us. Mm -hmm. Father, we bless your holy name, so that each one of our hearts would be humbled as we consider the love and the sacrifice that you made, that you made Jesus for us when, when you came to this earth. Lord, you not only sacrificed your life, you sacrificed all of your life, Lord, everything, for the glory of God. Lord, may each one of us truly lay down our lives, so that we may glorify your holy name. So that we may be raised up by the power of your resurrection. Mm -hmm. Amen. To live a holy life devoted to you. Mm. We bless you, Lord. Mm. Thank you for your love. Mm. You know, we have those pictures of love. We have you young ones, you have parents, I believe one of you got into some kind of trouble. You, you, you. Your father, mother will just hover over you. You know, they will not blame you or try to be hard on you. They will, they will educate you, discipline you. You know, be hard on you in the surface. <laughs> you straight up. But if you are broken, you are lost. You, you some have some serious trouble. Am I right? Not self in trouble. Well, you know what? They will abandon everything. Am I right? They will even lay down their own life for you. Don't tell me that's not gonna happen. Because I know you're bad, your parents and my <laughs> you remind them. And that they don't ever think about it. They, if they don't do it, they feel something is wrong about it. <laughs> you know? They they will just do it without any second thought. Just, well, that's who I am. That's 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 my child. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's interesting that kind of love is not continuing to be the governing life. In everyday our in action, and we don't necessarily always appreciate and educate ourselves, establish ourselves in this kind of love. We continue with the, the sinful nature of selfishness, self-centeredness, self-will. You know, the will of self. We continue to ascribe this relationship as a total self-fulfillment. It's very interesting to see the devil how subtle he is. To infiltrate, amen, our lives in a different way. And we, we, we know we love our parents. 
But until Christ has come, until all other disturbances has really been burned in the furnace, in a quick mode, you know, like a wildfire, boom, gone, you know, okay. My child is in an accident, you know. My mom is, is, is a sick, you know. I will drop every other engagement wrong to it. And oftentimes in the main things life, in everyday life, we don't necessarily build relationships and relate to one another based on this freedom. We feel somehow strange about this. And I pray God give us the freedom to really learn one another. And this kind of love is a word word demanding. Not that's how we must a uh, master <laughs> But we're demanding for your heart to keep pure, <laughs> for your vision to keep clear, amen? For your culture to not be contaminated, amen? For your will continue to line up with the guiding light of the Holy Spirit in God's will. And it's where we're, we're, we're demanding, amen? Hallelujah. We're, we're sacrificial. You know, the idea of um, a life, God is going to annoy me with a supernatural endowment, I feel good, empowered, energized, ecstatic, I'm going to do all kinds of things for God because the power is like electricity, like a supernatural glory, angel walk around me, <laughs> whatever good. All those things are true, He can do that if He needs to. But you know what is really God wants from a man's life? In son's life? Obedience. This oneness with his will, whether in good time or bad time. Whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it. Whether you have the power <laughs> can make you fly, <laughs> walk on water, or you're going to just sweat on your heart and, you know, and, and weep and, and cry and uh, stretch it to yourself. You, can you imagine Peter, the guy? <laughs> On the figure, the morning child's figure is saying, walk on water, do all kinds of things with the Lord. They experience a lot of kinds of things. And eventually, when God narrowed him down, the Lord narrowed him down. Peter, when you are young, turn with me to John nice poem. How you love? You see, this is a culture, different kind of love. Different uh, other word in love. That word is not a really good word to express. It's, a, it's a God's love. It's, it's not belong to this world. It's not cultured. It's not informed, educated, produced by this world. Anything from this world. And then that's why John said, do not love the world. For if you, 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 you have any love in the world, the love of God is not in you. It's incompatible, basically. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I'm looking at, today I'm a little bit of a chart. We're talking about the first John the Gospel, sorry. In the last chapter. First John he talks about this other kind of wor- a love, but oh, in read the last on chapter he read talks on that. of John he talks about read on that. Peter. Yes, so read on that. Yeah. I didn't find it yet, but read. I know that it's in the uh, last maybe portion four yeah. or five. I didn't prepare for this topic. I was intended to start a totally different way of presenting this this understanding because I want to talk about the family. God wanted to talk about the first is what kind of love that He expressed through His family, or He wanted His family like. Um, amen. It's a, such a wonderful thing. And now, children, I really want you to understand. You need to read a lot of history. You need to know the outside world look like. I mean, it's not for cruelty, darkness, but you need to understand that mankind without God has suffered tremendously. And there are evil men, were were ambitious men, had to do a lot of exploits, do a lot of things, do a lot of good thinking to try to have our life as a human being to make a sense of it. And I did a lot of search. I did a lot of the search. I will tell you, there is no other way to the simple and profound will of God's love. God's heart. He were were not interested in what it accomplished for him, but he's were much interested in what I understand 
and willing to practice. It never started from big things. It's always in the everyday, uh, in the in the small thing. And God's work is always relational. He he, he demands relation to be right all the time. And then, yeah, if you don't have good relationship, with me, your own thing will make your conscience unclean for sure. But if you have a relationship wrong, and then nothing's right. Nothing about you, about your dedication to God, is right. That sounds very crazy. That's why Jesus said, make peace with your enemies. Make peace with those who don't have peace with you. On conditions allow you to do it. <laughs> but don't, you know, you, the devil knows if you'll pay the price if you don't do it. <laughs> and your life is not straight. You don't feel free. You don't feel inspired. You don't feel that you're doing something meaningful, something matters. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't you don't feel get anywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead. So we don't want that life. That is a miserable life. As first John in five chapter somewhere, I believe. I'm sorry. This is in four chapter. This is a scripture. In the very day the Lord had to send a man who actually, when he was young, they just told him the scripture. So uh, we were sleeping in cold winter morning <laughs> uh, with Dominic. You remember that? Yeah. And uh, we discussing this. Because suddenly recognize God is love. God is love. After watching a movie, weeping for an hour or so, the disappointment, when a psychiatrist tried to do his best, you know, and to keep the family together. And uh, it's a beautiful movie, but uh, I just can't imagine when the mother took off. Beautiful husband and son. Before the tragedy happened, the woman cannot heal her own heart, cannot let go her bitterness. We're a kind woman, we're civilized, but hold on a little. This is just a foolish, miserable condition. And she willing to put every other relationship in the fire, and burn away, and eventually walk away, you know, dry it away. And here the psychologists to give all the peace to the son and the father, and they a little bit have a settlement. That they hug each other, why sing, they see the beautiful sunset, mother's right away, and they didn't see a word. They sit on the porch, on the stairs from from porch, and there some, the father give the son a good hug. Because the son blamed himself for make, make all this happen, the psychiatrist. And the father saying, basically, this is your fault. And the, the son feel healed. You know? And the father feel happy that he can, he can heal the son you know, by introducing the psychiatrist. You know? I'm said, that's not it. <laughs> that's not going to last forever. <laughs> the son going to grow up. He will never forget the mother walk away. The mother went away. Well, never forget how bad in my childhood, my, my spend. That's not a solution. That's a lie to yourself. <laughs> what, a, what a miserable lie. What a miserable counsel. <laughs> I think the psychiatrist is a lie to the people. So it's a foolish father. He embraces this idea that there's nothing wrong about everybody. Everybody is wrong. <laughs> You don't even think about how important family is, how important your own child is, how important the other person matters to you. How you can manage life like as if you're always self-centered. It's all about how you feel, how you think, but that's unfortunately become a modern day medicine. And I, we so wrap it up with a little bit of self. And you look at it in the mirror, looking at any good, sincere, and truthful light, 
It's a miserable stuff. And there's no good in it. And by the way, the Bible said, there is no good in you. <laughs> Reckon that. Don't glorify that. Him read for us in five, in four chapter in the last part. Amen. Hallelujah. In in a, but we will have a different life if we receive the love of God. Paul said, when the love of God said a bro in my heart, it was a bro. He's basically saying it's like a mighty flood coming, flood into my. This, this horse. Have you seen in the morning in a dark room in every curtain closed? <laughs> you have no light. Suddenly you open the curtain. The light is just... Oh, you know, imagine the sun is being on you. you know, oh, the whole heart of you, the whole life of you is lit up. Not because you see this. Everything changed. Everything changed. The will, the old life has to be ready for us to become sons of light. But unfortunately, we have Christianity, we have a, a self congratulating way of doing relationship. We continue, try our best, think our best, all on whose terms? On our own terms. But we refuse to enter and receive and express God's love. And God's love is free. Free to receive. Really good. Never ask anything back. That's very hard. You don't do calculation. <laughs> you don't do management. You do whatever requires you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Can be very, very hard. <laughs> because you have to do something that offend people. Make their life be conditioned to wake up in a different way. You will change their mind. You will change their mind. <laughs> You will strike down like this, uh, you know, to Paul, uh, down the horse back. Amen? But that's a joy, to whip them from the humanity back to the life God has for them. Go ahead, brother. God is love. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in Him. In this way, love is made complete among us. So that, we will have, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in the world we are like Him. Amen. So somebody said, we can't be like God until the end of the story. <laughs> until we rapture. <laughs> there you go. So hold this like Him. Being expressed. Go ahead. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. The word is command. Must. Must. Where it means command. Must. Love them in the will of God. Love them in the truth of God. Love them into the purpose of God. Not love their miserable self. Not love, not indulge them. <laughs> Rather discipline them. Correct them. Repeat them. And if they turn, repented, and want to enjoy the love of God, you pour your life to them. Amen? Celebrate every step they make. Amen? Be a stepping stone for them. Be a one willing to lay down your life for them. Amen? Hallelujah. Be a good shepherd. Be a good brother. Be a good friend. You know, be, be one that uh, see them excel, you celebrate. You know, so see them... Uh, uh, become excellent, what do you do? You cherish it. You consider life as your own. I mean, I mean, Rachel, you have been wonderful mother. Every child makes progress, you know, make a shallow praise or shallow contact, but you just sacrificial. Am I? So you don't think everything. I don't 
see you, everything, this is for me. This is what to make me know. This to make me feel good. I mean, you just did that. What perfect love as a mother. And I know that you did that because that love is naturally in you. You did a lot of things for others. You struggle and other things. But for the most part, you have a, be a beautiful sister, beautiful friend, about a beautiful servant in the whole of the Lord. And I want to honor you today, before God, and before your children, before God, particularly. Be blessed. Be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. The more God knows everything, I don't know everything. And God can do less. Because those things are fundamental of life. Fundamental of life. If we say we believe God, we love God, we try to fulfill God, but this kind of life is not saturated, oriented in every day what we do, then we've got a problem. We lie to ourselves. And we're not one with God. Recently, I begin to engage certain things, basically, try to see if God's work can include them. If I can help them, you know, the response has been word code. Some don't even give the courtesy to respond to me. <laughs> and that's where I'm fortunate for them. Why? Because they're so selfish. They have no understanding that I'm doing all that in order to involve their life in the work of the Lord. You know, I'm not trying to present myself to be somebody. If that is the case, I will not do what I do. Nor is you the person maybe I rely on to. <laughs> to to the, uh, call for service, for, for partnership, for the... For, for what in the world? Amen. But if we don't have this kind of heart in our whole reformation life, we can never hear God. The Lord is shut out to us. But we'll deceive ourselves and we think we know that we fall to trust everything. You know, on, on the contrary, on the other side, I will tell you some story. Whenever I think about certain things in Kenya, process, Ramallah, you know what happened? John, you might test me what happened. Do I see anything? Or what do I think? What do I pray? What happened? It's all happened. Some are here. Some of the testify. Some. Why is it happening? Why is it happening? The Holy Spirit is willing. The Holy Spirit is received. So here's the deal. <laughs> if we don't have the Holy Spirit, and we pretend we are walking the will of the Lord, we pretend, because that's all you have is a pretension. And you made out your mind, this is how you serve, this is, how we, this is why I was doing things, then you are far removed from the living being of the Lord. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is active. The Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit don't, don't, don't play games, you know? He knows everything. Do you know there's mighty work that is unfolding in our midst that's going to surprise the whole world? That's coming. Work week is coming. Hallelujah. And teaching like mine, going to found the many winning heart. Right now we're small. Now we have wrong willing people sometimes. But that's okay. If this word caught you, maybe caught. The word challenge you, maybe challenge. The word humble you, maybe humble. Amen. Hallelujah. Before the rod of the Lord, nothing can stand. Before the word of God, nothing can stand. Amen. Hallelujah. They have to be measured. Amen. Hallelujah. And we talk about the God's family culture. Become the age long longing and plan of God. Want to found a willing, understanding people. And if we don't have a good heart for this, God will judge you. Jesus said, I don't judge you. My word will judge you. Because you have refused the day when those words try to find you as a willing recipient. Whistle. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus faced the same dilemma. Peter, Paul faced the same dilemma among so quote unquote believers. But we should not be feel discouraged. Amen. I want to clean up the slate. I want to remove every obstacle. Amen. Casting every stumbling block so this culture can be founded and 
laws and plan the establish the in the sure foundation. Tim in this in the heart uh, in this light, hold up your heart, pray for us. Amen. Hallelujah. And it will accomplish his will. It will accomplish the work. Some said I'm a prophet. Some said I'm a good teacher. Well I'm telling you, the first thing first, I'm a son of God. And I am teaching this message not as a personal message. And I can check and judge. I can nurture the assembly as a blessed people. I mean, that's what it is. Amen? Hallelujah. You like it or not, that's when the word of God comes, he comes like with thunder, like lightning. Amen? He will come with authority power. Jesus is not the a easy preacher. Moses was not an easy preacher. He don't speak to tingle up man's ears. He tell what it is. He tell the way it is. Now often it's very challenge to people because people don't want to know God. They think they know, want to know God, but not when the robber hit the road. Amen? Not when the ark need a holy way to be inaugurated in their midst as a holy sender of the order. Hallelujah, you pray for us. Mm. Mm. Father, we do pray that this holy order be set up, established, Lord, as a foundation stone in the hearts of your people. Lord, that this would be the first true cornerstone laid in the lives of each son, Lord, who calls upon you as Father, Lord, that you might raise them up as one in your own house. Lord, and impart your life, your wisdom, and your glory to them. Lord, let this be a blessing to the earth, as you promised it would be. For it was through the seed, the promised seed, the promised sons that you said you would accomplish this. Lord, the promise you gave to Adam and Eve. Lord, the promise that you gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The promise that you gave to David, no, close your eyes. Lord, the reason. promise that was given so as I can to Jesus Christ, your Son, and the apostles, Lord, in the same commission, to be fruitful, to multiply, to cover the face of the earth, to rule, Lord, with this wisdom, with this life, and with this love. Mm. And so, Lord, we pray that this people would truly be raised up, Lord. May we be counted among that number, Lord. May this foundation be established in our own midst. And Lord, may we come to the place of maturity and responsibility so that we can even begin to build and lay the stones, Lord, and activate the, the services in your temple, the sacrifices, those things that are pleasing to you, Father. First, laying down our own lives, Lord, and then bringing in the others. Lord, that they may be a sweet smell to you. Lord, for the fulfillment of your heart in the world. Mm. We bless you, Father. Mm. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. And you continue in five chapter in the beginning said in John the Gospel. The same when the teaching from the love of God within the holy people is you try to express. Everyone who believes in Jesus the Christ is a born of God. Mm. That's how you belong to this culture. You are a member of this family. And everyone who loves the Father loves the children as well. That's how you express this life. How you develop relationship in this culture. Amen? This is how we know that we love the children of God. Amen? By loving God, they carry out the commands. And what are the commands? Repeating. Amen? This is the love for God to obey his commands. Repeating again. For good reason. Because evidently, people don't do it. This is love for God to obey His command. That His command is not burdensome. It has to be done out of a willing heart, a joyful heart, an understanding heart. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. That means, what makes it burdensome is the world. Is the world make it seem the burdensome? Because it's a challenge to a different culture. The world its own way. Amen. We do otherwise. They don't necessarily agree with you, they don't cheer you on, they discourage you, they, they distract you, if not, they try to hit you because of it. Amen? Hallelujah. Then, this is a worthy, this is a victory that, overcome, that has overcome the world, even our faith. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And who is that to overcome the world? Only he who believes Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. And he comes in different ways. But eventually, God is talking about it. you begin to enter and nurture it and build up. Uh, into a different culture, different way of love. Amen. Hallelujah. Back to Romans book, different pictures. Okay. So, how to be a disciple of this love and then become a minister of this love, which is a, the family culture of God. And uh, is, I'm sorry, turn with me to John Gospel. It's evidence through this transforming experience that Peter had after Jesus resurrected, he was confronted by him uh, and the lake called the Lake of Galilee, I believe. So in the last chapter of John the Gospel, hallelujah. Uh, I'm sorry, in the, ch- uh, the, the chapter before maybe. Yes, it's the last chapter. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. In 15 now, so they were fishing, eating, Jesus showed as a resurrection man, hallelujah, and called them, evidently he hide himself a little bit. And uh, he said to Peter, uh, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than this? And we know the story, that is a copy love. A copy me more than this. So what is this? Is that evidently Jesus will carry on a little conversation and Pride. Peter was a little bit pride himself. He's a very, very passionate man, but he always have a competitive spirit in him. So he tried to prove Jesus or prove to others he loved, he can die for Jesus, he can do better than anyone else for Jesus. And Jesus didn't rebuke him ahead of time, he didn't discourage him from doing that, but eventually Jesus knew. There is, that life has to be persuaded. And in this occasion, and Peter was profoundly defeated and proved not able to commit his passion. And so, mm-hmm. and, uh, so he, they had a little conversation. Evidently, the privately, Peter came to Jesus and said, Oh, I love you more than anyone else. <laughs> so, so don't fear others, fear me. <laughs> and uh, Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love you. It's still love, but that love is put in a different light, check. And he said, it faded my shape. So, you want to love me? Good, take care of them. Don't treat it them as if they're a, it's a competition. They are your target of love. There is your blessing to help them. Blessing to love them. Amen. Hallelujah. And... Uh, Jesus I said again, you know, so Peter evidently have a very, very uncomfortable response. What? <laughs> so, okay. so it's beyond our person? You mean has to include them? <laughs> no, so, so give me a lot of heart. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> this, you know, you know how to go. <laughs> and, uh, mm, and she said, he, he was not ready to commit. <laughs> and she, she said, Simon, son of John, and that's where our fish are. You know, those times you call like that, it's like, uh, uh, Naomi, Naomi, Ruth, Payson. <laughs> call your whole name. <laughs> call your whole name. So I think your mom wants to be serious with you. Someone said, Naomi, Ruth. <laughs> you know, <so>, right? <laughs> Her a few times. <laughs> no more Naomi. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's funny, huh? Naomi rules. <laughs> Call your attention, right? So, and here she said, Simon, son of John, do you truly, uh, what's the word, the, the Greek word called? Uh, Phileo me. me. Phileo me. Phileo is a brother in law. Mm-hmm. Affectionate love, personal, relational love. <laughs> and, uh, what? <laughs> Very interesting, right? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he said, Oh, yeah, Lord. 
You know what I love you. Peter was very rash. <laughs> He's not actually informed this time. And, uh, and you know I love you. We're personal, you know. And uh, Jesus said, then take care of my shade. Take care of Sensei. You know, you treat him like a friend, you know. <laughs> but he's not compromising. <laughs> he dig the dirt out. You know? <laughs> and uh, get the rock out, you know. They till the soil, what do you do? You clean up the rocks, you know. So, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. He, he tried to get the land of Peter's heart to be prepared for the good work. You know, so, and uh, the third time he said it, Simon, you know, he looked around, still not convinced this is a good life to get into. <laughs> All this needed for him. And then uh, Peter was hurt. Yeah, and the third time he said, Simon, stern right now. Do you love me? Peter was hurt. Have you been hurt by someone that loves you, respects you, but is not giving you easy time because your follies or your limitations? And that one exerts impact, a, 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 a hard conversation and said, Nami, no more drinking water? Nothing like that, nature. <laughs> Don't do it again. I mean something here. Pay attention. And, and, and what? Wow. You not love me. Why you not give me a, give me a hard time? Yeah. And, and the father or the teacher or someone have a manager. He said, Well, you know what? I have a great life for you. I have great like a uh, in great. Uh, um, Affair, you know, waiting for you to rise up to take care of it. You got to rise up to the occasion. I can't have you to come in and tell your childish, your limited ways, or your self centered ways. Come on now. Come on now. You know, let go of that. Let's talk about the serious business here. And Peter was hurt because he has never embraced this instruction. Now he wants a big leader. He fluff around, they fluff around, you know, got all the attention. But he never really understand those are his own people. He never understand Jesus come was not to, to, to be a religious leader for them, a good rabbi, a good compassionate, loving people company, you know. He just tried to say, let us have a family, a different kind. Let us love one another in the way the Father always longed for man to learn the love of God. Peter never understand at this point. He was a huge will over his mind because he cannot translate his old condition of his relation with the law, with God, with to the fellow friends he had, I think he, he's not an ugly person, or mean spirit person, but still, he has prescribed and project those relationships in a totally different culture. Can I? A different vision. Without vision, God's people do what? Perish. And that happened to more than God's people, to all mankind. That's which the, actually the talk I want to prepare <laughs> If you don't know history of man, well, our education most of part has been along the teaching of the Bible, uh, you know, the history of God's people, Israel, and the continued church. But uh, I want to tell you again and again, in tracing different regions, different cultures of people, the same story repeats itself. Man flourish, feel collected, feel accomplished, feel getting somewhere and be pride in that. But eventually it's all sham. Nothing actually means 
recently came, and no one has have some discussion about the marking, you know, founding certain ways. Um, but I have think this a lot through my time because it was one of the great interests. Is a whole a people can be organized or cultured okay, in such a way that really, really, all members be respected, all members can genuinely practice love, genuinely being helpful, you know, so, and uh, rather than um, greed, no, I'm, I know I'm generalizing here, but the, I'm talking about that as being the inspiration of man. That actually is, is the undergirding of the ones of man, that we somehow can organize ourselves to be a better people. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the revolutionary impact on American life is the, is the government, the whole build up, actually trust the people will be able to improve themselves. They, they, they keep, keep able to manage themselves. That's never happened before in human history, which is a great fear still in certain societies. But my point is that, you know, in all this, however, we see what well, the absence, the absence to understand what God wants. In all that, few have understand who Jesus is. Who on the thing our Holy Spirit can teach me, can guide me, can renew me, can transform me. Few understand what it means to be, as so they will talk about, what it means to be a good father. But write novels. We, we, what it means to be a good mother? You know, we, we have ideas. We write in books. Out of book, what it means to be a good mother? Then you look at it. Mm, that is American good mother. <laughs> that is in the sixties. <laughs> that's eighties. That's twenties. American. And that's uh, in South. <laughs> that's uh, in Texas. It's all with fractured and narrowed down to a certain ideals man tried to make a dent. What it means good. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But few has even start has recognition there's nothing good in where? In me all good things come from where? From the Father. And this is where Peter was. God the Jesus Get the Peter on the bottom, the bottom, you know, <laughs> straight at him <laughs> and narrow him down and did give him a ledge. He basically said, Peter, Peter, do you love me? Can you be good to me? Can we be good friends? And yeah, I love you. Yeah, I feel you, but I still love you. Peter, can you translate that to love others that I going to give to you for care. No. What that means? <laughs> Have not done enough for you. I give up everything. That's my struggle. You know, to remove your passion, your sense of achievement from what you can do. To say, okay, maybe I want to see young ones thrive. Others thrive. That's very difficult for me self-centered man, like me, here Peter have a time time. And let's look at, he got hurt. He got hurt. He's feeling hurt <laughs> by Jesus. <laughs> Jesus never hurt my feelings. <laughs> Jesus always comforted me. <laughs> Jesus always kind to me. You got another Jesus going on, believe me. <laughs> and sorry. <laughs> But Jesus heard Peter for reason greater than himself. For he for reasons that his life and found the will of God. They found the will of God. Elijah, you come around, let me lay hands on you. What happened? You're sick? Okay.
in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Be healed tonight. Thank you, Father. Amen. Have good rest in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. So, the third time, because Jesus asked him, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. That is, examining finally his heart, he found, it's like Abraham found the faith. Am I right? It was the last thing. Yeah, he, he examined himself real well. It's not cheesy. It's not shallow. It's not just... This is squeeze it out, the profound inner examination. Amen? Hallelujah. I mean, in order to enter this membership of God's household, everybody has to examine itself in a certain way. And this is very hard. But the early apostle, each one of them understand this. Turn with me to First Corinthians. I'm going to finish this. What I tried up to is a how to enter into the family culture of God. And what is the family culture of God really is about? Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. In 27, in 11, chapter 27. 11, chapter 11, verse 27. Mm-hmm. 11, 27, 1 Corinthians. In talking about the the communion, he said, it, Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner is, will be good as sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Do we really know what that means? You see, we quickly translate, Don't misbehave in a solemn occasion communion. That's not what he meant. And far beyond that, a brother. That's Yes, yeah, that's part of it. It's a, that, that's a simple. <laughs> you don't do that. But what is really meant here? He said, eating the bread, the drinking the cup, means something. It symbolifies something. It's, it embodies something. It's a culture center of something. I mean, therefore, you don't partake it or involve the thing without a firm understanding something. I want you to see this with a heart of understanding. If you don't, you will be considered guilty of a sin. Wow. There are a few occasions in the Bible, New Testament, talking about serious sin. We're talking about if you sing the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven. <laughs> Jesus said. Then he said, this one, concerning a communion, that in a certain culture, in a certain understanding, if we don't embrace it, it's a sin. And because that is sin, you're guilty for something, the benefit, the glory of God, is not going to be with you. The grace of God is going to be withdrawn from you. That's why it's interesting. <laughs> the carrying the Lord will withdraw from you. If you understand my saying, uh-uh. mm-hmm. hope you do. Now, and then what is against? He says, sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Read really in John the Gospel, uh, First John again, talking the love transition in the testimony. We this one come. Not from this world, come from God, it come from water, come from blood, come through blood, comes with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. So what I mean, the relation to this communion, this receiving of a culture, the same book in the beginning said, for our fellowship is not with ourselves, but with whom? And those who fulfill this fellowship go outside the world. The reason is the love of God is not in them. If they love God, they will stay. They will perform. They will respect these things. Now, I'm not trying to condition our little fellowship in that light, but it's merely the expression of certain things and the same principle stand. They can't stay with us because the love of God is not in them. They love the world. They love themselves. That's the key. You can't convince people like that. They have to make their own choices. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I know the full of fact. If they think they bless God, they will, they will drive souls and miles to see somebody. But when God's word comes freely, cheap, and the doorsteps, what do they do? They will despise it because he does not feed their bill of imagination, their self-love. He is going to condition, train them, he has to instruct them, he has, has to profoundly shake them up. Amen? Hallelujah. And do not apologize. For this inconvenience to their life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. He has to inconvenience everybody. Amen. That's the kingdom of God. It takes precedence in every other life. And if you don't do that, well, the kingdom of God is not with you. I'm speaking about a certain way pursuing God. He has to take precedence. And many of prophesy. That we have been the message of the Lord, we're doing something very new in our age, but the point of making is prophesied in my dream. When I begin to teach these things, many will fall away. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you read me, God is going to empower and be a tremendous bless. So let us not worry about this. It's like God has to shoot the tree for the dead leaves to fall. Amen. Hallelujah. God has to seize all up the unfruitful branches. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But look at this. He said, You are sinning against the body and the blood of Christ. So there are two provisions here, or two economy here, that this one is the guilt of not honoring. And therefore, he wide a curse to his life. The first is the body, the second is the power of the blood, the ministry of the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then said in 13 now. 13 now. That's why many of you, because the sin against many of you are weak and sick. Amen. A number of you have fallen asleep. You diagnose their problem. The first Corinthians have a lot of sickness going on in the league. Hallelujah. Uh, because in 29, for anyone who eats or drink without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drink judgment on himself. What is missing? What is missing? He don't understand he's a part of a, a body. Part of a family, if you can use the word. And then the members of the family. So Paul used the word here, speaking you are part of the body. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are members of one family. So, here Peter... And the admonishment Jesus have no clue even that a family exists. But it was the same Peter little day said that we are holy people. Amen. I entrust you into a family. Amen. It was the same Paul have a hard time to understand this because he thought you already belong to God. Amen. It was the same later on said that we are family of God. Amen. For Christ died, raised up again. He will bring many sons to glory. Therefore, the sons, because he belongs to his family, he is not ashamed of God's mother. Brothers. So in essence, Peter has never practiced brotherly love <laughs> to this point. Amen? In this occasion. But he did a lot of good things for the Lord and with the Lord and with others. Amen? Paul understands this. He translated it into a fellowship, into the culture, and in the Simple, uh, the symbolic uh, way of uh, eating and drinking together as one family. Amen? Hallelujah. Then, body and drink. Anyway, so, then he said, you need to have this personal reckoning. Just like Peter had on the personal reckoning. He said in 31, but if we judge ourselves, if we consider this thing for the entry into this Holy Communion, Become a holy people, set apart people. If we judge ourselves, we will not come under judgment. So self-examination is required. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined, so that we will not be condemned with the world. That's how you be set apart from the world. This all sounds ridiculous. But look, this is not religion. You can't do this religion until your heart has a transformation, a renewal, and example by Peter's life, 
and well expounded by Paul. Amen. A renewing of the mind. What is the will and the purpose of God is for you become this people. Amen. Hallelujah. In in here said feed my sheep in twenty one chapter uh, John again he said I tell you the truth. When you are younger, you will dress yourself whenever you want. But when you are old, you will stretch your hand, and someone else will dress you and let you where you to go. Now, here, young, old, considered as if the age, you know, getting older through the years. But that's not what Paul met. Paul met, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Jesus met. Paul. Uh, Jesus met. It's like a Paul met in later days in the Hebrew book. When you are young, you think like a child, you express like a child, but then you will mature. You mature into love of God, and this love will find the freedom. Amen. In the way. Amen. Hallelujah. And here talking about then you will embrace the fullness of son's life. Before that, you are slave. Before that, you are baby. Before that, you are not permit to mature. You are not able to burden the service responsibility within God's household. You are not able to disciple others of God. The practice the way of the family child of God. Making sense? Entrustment. Yeah. So when here speaking, when you are old, when you are getting mature, Amen, hallelujah, and you will stretch out your hand. Why? Because the priest do that, he stretches his heart, and like Aaron in the early uh, occasions, and then in the New Te- Old Testament, what happened? He stretched hard his hand, he stripped down naked before the people who commanded him. God helped Moses put a holy priesthood attire, amen, on him. Amen, hallelujah. He is a new man. He is entering into a new official position and capacity. Amen? Hallelujah. He is glorified and honored before God. Now, you will stretch your, out your hand. Someone helps will dress you and let you <laughs> where you don't want to go. means you don't necessarily want to do this life. It's a service. It's difficult. Amen. Hallelujah. Feed my shape. But you do this. If you love me, this is the life I prayer for you. This is the entrustment I want you to fulfill. Amen. Hallelujah. The burden with. Now, what then is this officiation to a new common service means? Hallelujah. In the same John Gospel in 15th chapter. Now, talk about the family again. Say, my commandment as the disciple of the Lord. <coughs> So Jesus revealed the Father, now he revealed his culture. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a family culture. Amen. In twelve. Fifteen chapter twelve. My command is this love each other as I love you. <laughs> Greet lies no one than this that he lay down his life for his friends or kinsmen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus Paul it down speaking, your fellow Brothers, amen, your fellow brothers. And you are my friends if you do what I command. What I command is to be a new people, embracing, expressing, and practicing a new culture. And he says, This you ought to be my disciples, to be taught by me in this new way of life. Amen. Hallelujah. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know the master business. A slave. And uh, uh, turn with me to the same gospel, talking the slave, basically is not a good servant of the Lord. Amen? Not a true son of Abraham. In 8th chapter, hallelujah, hallelujah, he talking to the Jews, he scowled them down. He shake them up. He cast them away. In 31, said in 8, to the Jews who believe him, said, If you hold to my teaching, the same word, you are really my disciple, the same word, then you will know the truth, and this culture, this new way of life will set you free. And they answered, We are Abraham's children. We are never enslaved to anybody. How can you see? We'll be set free. 
And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins, what is sinning? Missing this culture, missing this call, missing this lifestyle, missing this ministry. Amen? Hallelujah. This is a covenant blessing. Amen? Hallelujah. And who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family. That's Jesus' understanding, am I? So don't think I'm teaching strength teaching here. It's a repeated through through in the Bible, through various authors of the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. It then you're not you don't a, a family member who is Ishmael. Ishmael was the son of a slave woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look what it is those who think they call the Son of God embrace the Son message. Embrace the kingdom message of God. If they don't practice the culture, <laughs> a new discipleship, what kind of wine they fill the bottle in? What kind of clothes they're wearing? What kind of wine skin they, they're receiving into? I'm just talking. <laughs> don't just think people really believe. They don't believe, they don't practice it. And they can't practice it if we don't let go a certain way of organizing as part of life. Amen? They're not willing to be taught of a new way of life. And put into practice. Put into practice. But the beauty of it, we have a willing people. I mean, as a challenge it is, we'll be challenged like Peter is. Amen? But we are willing. See, we are kind of crossed over. Amen? The beautiful thing is the ark of the Lord is, is on our shoulder and the land has begun to us for our possession and our blessing. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Tim, I know you're excited, excited inside of you, so pray for us. Thank you, Father. You're excited. Now you see. Now you know. Now you understand why God is doing what He did in our midst for this culture, the found expression in the willing people. And we are going to thrive in it. Nobody can stop that. Bless the Lord. Not you and me. <laughs> God promised he will do. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Lord, let the, the train move continually, Lord, in, with all of its power and weight. Lord, as an unstoppable force. Lord, how much more the train of your glory, the full expression of your heart, your will, your desire, and your eternal purpose. Lord, to have a people. And to have that people represent your heart and your ways by the way that they love one another. So what is sin? Well, our own kind of reflection. What is sin? Missing this way of life. Mm -hmm. is sin. Go ahead. Father, I pray that we would be those who are uh, advancing to the mark, to the appointed purpose that you have set out before you ever created. Mm -hmm. Lord, may we flow into that power that will culminate all things, that will fulfill all things and bring all things in alignment with your purpose. Lord, we, we desire that divine enablement and we desire to see this fruition in our midst, Lord. We pray for your blessing upon it in Jesus' name. Mm, in Jesus' name. Now you know what I'm getting at. Basically, he said, I call you friends. Amen. He has revealed the Father's business to them. Now choose you and appoint you. I garment you. Amen. I place you in all the world position to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last and the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Then, talking about the world. Amen? Hallelujah. The world will hit you because it's, amen? Because the challenge and the antithesis to their culture. Amen? Hallelujah. In 24 now. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. If I have not done among them what is no one else did, they will not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles, yet they have hated both me and my father. They seem to honor them. 
honor him, but with their lips. They don't do what he commands them to do. And this to fulfill what is written, Amen, in the law. Amen, the enemy without reason. Then he told me the Holy Spirit come to teach you this way, to enable you to be this way. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will enter into a life of love, not sin, and not missing the mark. Now in 5 chapter of 1st John, Amen, in 13 now. I write this into you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything so according to His will, this will. Amen? Hallelujah. Become a holy people, set apart people. He hears us. And if we, we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have what we ask for him the father son relationship become an economy if anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death sin misdeeds repentance from what leads to death so here John is giving example or giving instruction how to minister that how to minister repentance so part of your love is actually telling your brother to repent. If anyone sees the brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray and God will give me life. Be an intercessor. Be one covered that sin through your love. I refer to those who sin that does not lead to death. But there is a sin that leads to death. You can cover that. It's not your job. It's out of your control. I'm not saying that we should pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin. In other words, all lawlessness is sin. And there is a sin that does not lead to death. There is a different category of sin. What's happening to you? Mm -hmm. Could you, you guys pray with me? Uh, Feel bad? Yeah. We're sick? Mm -hmm. Not very sick. I hate it over there. Yeah. I don't know. I think I need to be prayed over. Okay, that's because of demonic things going on. Cannot stand the word of God. That's how 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 strong it is. Well, let's pray against this familiar spirit that in Elijah's life tried to distort and, and abuse his mind, his energies. Right now, in Jesus' name, we pray against all those strongholds. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You come on, stand with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, the word God's power. And power. I should know what's your vision, right, indeed? Mm -hmm. Okay. You see, when you move in the spirit, not by your little mind, oh, and when you begin to engage, again, begin to have a serious power, the devil will never leave you alone. You always want to come to detract, to hold you back. Hallelujah. Elijah, because the word tonight, your whole life will change. You know that? That's why, because you listen to it, it begin to set your mind, begin to uproot your life. Thank you, Father. Uproot the things in your life. You begin to receive the word with inspiration. I see that earlier. And the devil wants to snatch it away. Hallelujah. But it will not succeed. Amen. Hallelujah and he, you will be delivered. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray this will never come back again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Allah, now hold out your right hand and praise the God. Right now, I to pray God, no it didn't come upon you. You know, your, your Noah, when he was six years old, he was struggling, whatever, struggling, I don't think he was struggling. He was restless, you know, his mind was restless in the sofa. We're praying for him. The first time I prayed for him, and uh, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then he drunk in the Holy Spirit, I remember. <laughs> no one. He did that. And when I was six years old, he knew nothing. And your, 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 your dad, I think your mom was around, I'm not sure. And I was, uh, was all surprised how that happened. But it happened. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
you hold up your hand, bless the Lord. I pray the power of God come upon you as of now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray the spirit death be gone in the name of Jesus. I'm gonna do this often. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray against the spirit death. Are you con- contemplating the death? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's because of passion with your papa, huh? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray over my life, Lord. Um, I pray any enemy or destruction over my life would be. I rebuke it in the name of God. Mm-hmm. Lord, I pray for my family's life and that the devil will be crushed, Lord. Mm-hmm. He's a serpent, then, right? Remember that? That is a serpent. That the head of the serpent would be crushed, Lord. Mm-hmm. Lying to you, pervert the truth, word your life, make you. You can't speak truth, you can't act in truth, you can't find joy in doing truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Speak honesty, speak upright, speak in decency, progress with noble heart. Because the devil I always said, Hey, I can benefit yourself. You know. Do something good for yourself. Actually, destruction. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you willing tonight and now? I'm not trying to compel you. You're a young man with a good mind, good discernment. Are you willing to give your life to the Lord forever to serve Him as well as faith? Yes. Go ahead. Hold up your head now. Let your parents lay hands on you. Do that. I don't do this this often. Amen. Hallelujah. A few occasions. It's, uh, something going to happen to you. Let me share something with you. It's going to happen just like happened to me. Like wandering, with no, I'm not trying to crash in the wrong light. I'm just saying there is something changed, right? So that's what has happened to this young man, your brother. We know all one that happened. We just don't know when it's going to happen. Tonight it's happening. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Even it's wrestled his heart, wrestled his mind, and it was settled. Hallelujah! It was settled. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You know, Noah, uh, Elijah, you never see where to go if you want to run, you never know where to go, but you see the flag on the mountain where it happened. You know where to go. I mean, the flag is where sometimes you have an easy route to get there, but sometimes it can be quick, right? Hallelujah, it can be difficult, but at least you will never give up. So tonight, the Lord call in your life will be like that flag. Amen? That's where you will be. You will be a stand bear for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In this life, I pray any other version, any other voice, any other dictation to the we and the call your life be dismissed. Thank you, Father. As you go through the dark night, there's no light at all. Suddenly, you see a light come in the mountain or climb the right hope. And then you know where to go. You imagine. One who struggling in the dark night, in the tempest, he cried, he's weary himself, he don't know what to do, where to go, when he's going to land in the ship, and then hallelujah, and he said, oh, that's where I need to go, oh, that's the land where I found the rest, and he rescued. Hallelujah, bless the Lord, then he said, that I will landing there and plan my life there. Imagine the Noah in the old Bible, and then Hallelujah in the Bible. Forty day and then nine day. Thank you, Father. What do you feel? Breathing it out. Uh, what do you feel? Thank you, Lord. My heart is stirred. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, we know that you, God, are our healer, our deliverer. So 
In Jesus' name, I pray that you would deliver Elijah from any attack of the enemy, Lord. That his mind would be set free. That his heart would be full of your joy, full of your peace and your life. Lord, that his spirit would become one with your spirit. Right now we ask for your deliverance in his mind, his heart, and his soul. Lord, that as you walk with him, Lord, as you talk with him, revealing who you are, who he is in you, that he would have your strength and your power to do your good work. Lord, as we are each one learning to lay our lives down, may Elijah learn at such a young age that there is nothing here on this earth, in this life, that compares to a life with you. I've been praying for you this morning. Thinking about you, the Lord said, I will do in larger work. I will change a large life to be settled as I have settled no one. The sister is going to struggle a little bit in the world, but your life will have to be set apart. And He's going to do that for you. Elijah, He will do that as today. Amen. You are not able to understand it yet. But that power, that grace is released unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, don't, don't be alarmed. God will do wonderful things through you. Okay? So it's, he has this order in his name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Young lady, tonight you're blessed as well. I see the Lord enlightening your heart. Okay? So, by the way, it's your birthday. It's beautiful. You can celebrate the words, the ways, amen. You hear the table of the Lord. And you will be blessed. You will be blessed. Fear not. Hallelujah. Fear not. Do not follow the will of man. Hallelujah. God knows who those belong to him. And he will richly bless us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. No one wants you to stand up and first share that reading with us. And pray for your brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hard to settle. Maybe it's Jesus. What was the vision? In the vision, I saw um, a man holding what was like this golden trumpet in his left hand, um, and he was standing upon a boulder off on the ground and behind him was this marching army and at the at the blow of his trumpet the army gained speed and passed him and what the army proceeded to do is they they approached this this stronghold basically this uh, almost in the shape of like a dark mountain um, made purely of course of rock and stone and they they completely swarmed over it and it was almost as if they were an army of miners almost mm-hmm. with pickaxes not even armed mm-hmm. with swords particularly mm-hmm. but with mining tools and they completely leveled up lo- leveled the mountains into dust and they oh. proceeded to continue to do that to strongholds along the way so mm-hmm. that was what I saw the word of God as a power the power of us strongholds amen hallelujah the strongholds particularly you come wrong as well hallelujah um is the old cat family culture amen for minister build up empowered by religion and you see the manifesting young hearts but god going to do a cleaning work and have us renew the people Hallelujah, hallelujah. The teaching of the Word of God cannot be merely doctrine. It has to be power and, and, and manifestation. Hallelujah. And the expression will be young life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Know me. Hallelujah. The beauty of the Lord is within. 
the mind of the Lord is in the spirit. Hallelujah. The, the wonderful thing of the Lord is within. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? I want you to consider your brother. I was praying for two of you today. And I see you have a lot, have a lot of struggle. Am I? So, but you need to be a bigger sister. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a bigger heart. You know that, uh, uh, you know, um, Hallelujah, little things in life are important. When Elijah partner, you didn't grow up. Elijah, they meant Hallelujah, not the, you know, young kids anymore. Amen. The responsibility, the expectation come upon your life. And they are beautiful things. The wonderful things. You should rise up to the occasion. You'll see the blessing of the Lord every way. Amen. Hallelujah. The thing you truly strive for, truly desire, will naturally come to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Want to hear something? I saw God put a crown on your head today. A kingly, beautiful, ornamented crown. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I will lay your hands on you. Later. Thank you, Jesus. Now we pray for that as well. Thank you, Father. Lord, know how to work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. This is how you work it out. This is not interruption. This is expression. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that Lord, you would put your hand on Elijah, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would just heal him in Jesus' name, Lord. Pray that you would bless Elijah his, as he is growing, Lord, in you, Lord. Lord, that you had set his mind and heart on the right path, Lord. Lord, that he would see you, hear you, Lord, your power. Lord, that the enemy would have no touch in his life. Lord, only your power and your might. Lord, heal him in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. No, I pray for Elijah. What they learned. Thank you. you know, can you believe that there are occasions many times that it, going to turn around, um, that it, the deliverance sometimes take hours, even days, what happens? You don't be surprised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Alanamana, Sundanamana. Now, tell me what, what are you thinking? What are troubles you? Be strong physically. I just want the anything inside me to come out that's making me feel this way. Mm. Lord, I do bring before you, Lord, the the growing and changing and transforming spirit, Lord, and soul of my brother. Lord, we thank you for his destiny, Lord, that you have laid out before him. Can you close your eyes? You're waiting for him. Thank you. Lord, we do pray, Lord, for the healing of his body. Lord, we do pray for protection. Lord, but we pray above all things, Lord, for the activation of your purpose within his life, now in this moment. Mm. Lord, that it would, Lord, passionately manifest itself within his heart. Lord, that it would manifest itself within his spirit. Lord, manifest itself within his mind. Lord, that these, this un, the understanding of these things within his life, Lord, would be given a whole new perspective. Mm. Lord, on who he is. Lord, in you. Lord, to the others around him. 
Lord, who he is to himself. Lord, that you would truly bring about this whole new level of understanding and wisdom within his life. Lord, this greater capacity. Lord, for the things that you so desire for him to have. Lord, for the the good of your purpose and destiny within his life. So Lord, that we so Lord, we pray that all these things would fall in line, all part our things of him, Lord, would fall in line with your standard, Lord, and your will. Lord, and this will lead, Lord, to the to his healing. Lord, this will lead to his change in perspective. This will lead to his protection. So, Lord, I, I bless my brother Elijah in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Lord, we pray against the spirit of witchcraft for our people. Thank you, Lord. Now, look this realm. You will dare to come here for a moment, send an angel to cut them off. And he thought, Sanda la malaya la malaya. I pray the voice and the truth of your culture, Lord. We need to be done from the call and sound it up for us. And keep talking and we need to pray for willing hearts, willing people. Arise, arise, for the glory of the Lord will shine upon us. Arise, become that people of righteousness, people of his nobility and royalty, people of maybe sons of Abraham, sons of David, sons of God, your righteousness. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Elijah, even in today's struggle, Lord, and will be a prophet for you, Lord. Be one who will prophesy and teach your way, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let this be actualized even now, Lord. Thank you, Father. I pray. The spirit of sin and death, the domain of sin and death, will have no power over him, Lord. Thank you, Father. I pray for any curses, if that word can be used, or unwise criticism, come from the personality of life that don't know what they're talking about, they don't know what they're doing, Lord. The Lord let all those be cancelled by the power of the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let his life be set free. Follow grace and truth, Lord, in your goodness, in your purpose, in your holiness, Lord. Thank you, Father. I pray, Holy Spirit, today, even today, you can teach him mighty, wonderful things he has not yet known. Mm-hmm. Even healing, hearing heart, hearing mind, and hearing understanding, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm-hmm. And believe it. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for peace, for settlement. Spirit torment, spirit agitation, spirit confusion be gone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That spirit confrontation be gone. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the Malana. Can you see anything? Hmm. No vision per se, just uh, I saw Elijah though being clad with armor as a warrior. Mm. So he was being girded up. Mm. Girded up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had a vision earlier when... Hold on, hold on, let me finish this oh, teaching as you wrap it up. So that you know, there is a reason I mentioned those things. When the spirit moves, I don't prepare my teaching to the guardian. The Spirit teaches. I mean, that has been proved many a time before. I don't need to part of myself. I just want you to know, don't feel strange when God begins to reveal mighty, wonderful things. This is the, this is the thing that God longs for the people to desire to understand. I'm going to use two verses to wrap it up so we can move on with things here. But for your benefit, I really want you if there is any other teaching that really matters to your life, this is one of those teachings. Amen. Hallelujah. It's one of those teachings. What God really wants. Really what God wants us to become. Amen. First Corinthians. Don't go, brother. Don't move. Thank you, Lord. See there. 
in First Corinthians 2 said, no, uh, in talking about this maturity, in two chapters said, when we matured, then, then said, in 2 8, it said, non ruler this age, that is one who governs and educates others in the culture of this world. And then the wise man, the one who can carry it out, execute the culture and the way of the world. Not the ruler of this age understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it is written, No eye has seen, no ears have heard, no mind has conceived what God prepared for those who love him. And God revealed it to us by his spirit, by his spirit. Matthew, this is what this is meant in the parable of the seed. In the end, he said, Bless are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear. And many prophets, a righteous man, those are good ones who try to produce a godly people through their ungodly life themselves, through their relation with the Lord. But they were not given this grace. This wisdom. To see what you see, do not see it. Hear what you hear, do not understand it. Then he said, if they do, they will heal the mind, see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with the heart, and turn, and I will fully restore them. I will fully restore them. We then, I'm going to wrap it up with the Romans 13. Hallelujah. So my 13. This is how you to be closed in Christ Jesus through the practice this love. He said, and in 13, Romans 11 said, Fulfillment of the law, hallelujah. For love is a fulfillment of the law in 12, in 10 said, 11 said, and do this, understanding the present time. The hours come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first lived. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here, so let us put aside the deeds, darkness, and put on the armor of light. Let us close your eyes as we read this. Hallelujah. Let us be here decently as in the daytime, not in orgies, drunkenness, and in other bad things. Rather, close yourself with the Lord Jesus, and do not think how the grandfather Father desires the sinful nature. Hallelujah. So there is a, a closing of a new man in Christ Jesus. And uh, let the old man die away. Lord, we pray for Elijah. The best is the Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name, by the blood, by the name of Jesus. I pray Elijah will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Answer our cry. This boy is crying, and our heart is crying with him for your divine deliverance intervention, Lord. But of our Lord, to give him this new life in Christ, once for all, his life will be revolutionized into your ways, into your call and into your purpose, Lord. And baptize him, therefore, from heaven. But whatever seeking him, let it be gone in the name of Jesus. Let it be gone. You have no right by the name of Jesus, by the power of the blood of the Lamb of God, be gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Heal him from within to without. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let me talk to this. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for the cold power over this life be gone, Lord. Devil, you will not be this love. Thank you, Jesus. 
why is he oh thank you father thank you jesus devil hallelujah thank you lot of the sun and what kind of scary movie you saw thank you father you see anything strange movie mm -hmm. oh lord thank you father what a son and a man are you yeah, lord you pray for whatever infiltration in the power of the court be broken lord thank you father thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus john do you see anything today in your midst, Alan, with your life and with your love. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We're praying for Elijah. I remember it. We should have a vision or something like that. Share with us. Yes. Yeah, well, I had the vision actually when you, Tim, prayed the first time and you mentioned for Noah to have a vision. Mm. So it was earlier on yes. in the teaching. But mm. um, it was it was as, as if a arrow had been shot. Mm. Um, but it was being held back. It wasn't, you know, if an arrow sh is shot, it goes to wherever target yeah. it's going. Um, but it was if, if a very, at the time, in the vision, it's a very strange looking film of sorts, or I can't really call it plastic. It didn't look like plastic. I don't really know how to describe it at mm. first in the vision, mm. um, but it's not able to go forth, but it's stretching it. Right? Like a That's veil, am I? Right? So, a veil, I guess, yeah. 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 Um, and so I hope somebody else can explain this because no, I don't quite understand it. But they have the similar vision. Or somebody has a similar vision. You remember that? Yes. Well, it, and I, as I'm having the vision and, and you know, kind of asking the Lord about it, and in my mind I'm thinking, is it going to break through? Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, as it does eventually break through, it's almost like it's had been encased in liquid. Or like it was in liquid and in my understanding which is going to sound really strange it's almost like it had broken through a womb oh water or like oh. a yeah it yeah. was it's a very i don't mm. know if a womb is the right description of what mm -hmm. i even saw because it wasn't that it wasn't that uh descriptive really that sure, was just sure. what came to my mind so yes yeah, okay yeah. anyway <laughs> yeah that was the end of that but mm. i just thought it was very interesting so and then later as we were all talking or as you were teaching it, you mentioned, you know, the missing of the mark and the mm. um, missing of the way, you know. Arrow actually means song. Means in, song? Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the Bible, arrow is considered a song. Hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the father is considered the bow. Mm -hmm. You put the arrow shoot out. That always okay. a picture in the ancient time of the, yeah, the songs. Mm -hmm. You know, the songs, uh, you know, arrow or string, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. We say that by your purpose. You feel better, Elijah? I do. You do? Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? The change? Yeah, no headache anymore. No headache anymore? In my stomach. Yeah, I just saw something here happening. It was stationed here. The Lord told me to touch it. Is there a demonic power here? It was delivered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what it is. It's all caught. Be careful with what you watch. Okay, I saw something very strange to you, to me. I saw the, the you know, the devil has a symbol, right? With his horn, I mean, you know. I seldom see that in the picture, but I saw something behind it. So that's why I pray. But in the mind, I don't see clear, okay? And the Lord told me, you saw something, where that came from, because you know that you don't you have words insulated life, insulated environment, so where it came from. So I suspect that's not a revelation now. It's through your reading comic books or something like that. Do you read comic books? Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. I don't know that. I never see you read comic books. So get rid of it. Okay? You, you read, actually read comics. You do? Okay, that's where the source is. Okay, so don't read it. I mean, most of my occult people. Or the, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I'm not sure what common it is. Yeah. Garfield. Garfield. That's it. What does it mean? It's, like it's, it's about a cat. Okay. Whatever. It's a comic book, actually. It's I'm, I'm thinking comedy. it's more like a hero books, you know? Uh, no, heroes. He yeah. Yeah. 
whatever. So. Things that relating to dark thing, weird things. You're not your young life. You don't necessarily be able to handle those things. You know, so those actually most time are all called practices. Sorry, this is really to that kind of aspect. But then you guys can open up to yourself to do things. You know, so they're everywhere. So you can't even wait, but uh, you need to be aware at least. You have a spiritual presence. You have a spiritual powers. And then how long you want to be blessed? Uh, we'll pray for you. Yeah. Well, I know it's dragged along a little bit, but we saw them getting together, the children. And you guys be blessed. Hallelujah. Um, now we bless your sister today. Amen. Let's be recorded, it's okay. Hallelujah. This is what we do. You're 12 years old. I can't. I can't. Uh, I don't know if today is your birthday or not, but it's. It's on the 27th. Huh? Seven? My birthday is on the 27th. Oh man, that's a long way to go. No, oh, it was actually it was. 10 ago. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. No, I had no gift for you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I already cooked something for you, eh? <laughs> no, there's a gift. Lord bless this young life. I just trust this light to you, dear Abraham. I remember that you have not been baptized, Lord, I pray you will begin to teach her, to let not, no pressure on her, but Lord, I remember the desire, so happy to know and Elijah, and they always like, all oh, have visions about the baptism, Lord. Yeah, I remember Lord, the baptism back in the day, you know, mm-hmm. you have vision about the butterfly, something, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I have a vision about it. he actually seeing the sunlight in the lake, exactly what happened. <laughs> so Elijah saw his, his back in the well. Lord, I just pray for those things <coughs> that um, will be this life as well. No pressure, Lord, but we do want your spirit begin to continue her life to seek the thing, to ask the thing, Lord. You know, then the happy, um, carefree life that the down way is that's not what me meant but it, her life is begin to desire you to have holy curiosity about you have a divine requisite heart about you thank you father spirit of god begin to to teach her lord, to love your way love your word love your truth love to be a helper lord. i know she always wants to be a true helper lord she always uh, um, uh, Lord, she said, I'm going to do great things for others, but then that's small things. Well, I pray for it to, as she grow more and more, she will know that everything, there's no greed as small in life, Lord. Everything is a condition of heart. She began to, to nurture that heart and embrace and rejoice the heart, like mama and the sister do, Lord. A, a willing heart, a helpful heart, an understanding, a diligent heart, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. She will not just to take long, but she will take lead and inquire and search. What that means? Why you do that? What is God purpose in this? What What is your heart about this? How you go about that, Lord? I pray uh, 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 a desire to learn, to know, to understand, Lord, will be inspired. In the name of Jesus, she has a, such a capacity for understanding things, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right, go ahead. Lord, I pray for Esther. Lord, her life and you, Lord. Lord, as she is growing up, Lord, that you would just teach her and Show you, show her your ways, Lord, as she grows to be a young woman, Lord. Lord, I pray that she will learn to, Lord, have a heart for you, Lord, that, Lord, she would seek you. Lord, I pray that she would put all her trust in you. In your power, or that you would give her 
understanding mm. of your life. Or that you would give her visions, dreams, or that we may even learn wonderful things from her that you may share to her. Mm. Mm. So that you would bless Esther in Jesus' name. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Well, the Spirit is here, Esther. I don't physically feel things these days, but uh, may you pray to God with a, in, in your arms or so deep in your heart, the Lord answer your prayer. Right? Go ahead, guys. Mm. <coughs> Father, I thank you for this sweet sister, Lord. For this precious gift. You have given to us, Lord. Okay, Liza, come around. Let me continue to hand. I thank you for her life. And I thank you for all the things that you are doing within her heart and her mind. I do pray that you would give her a clear direction Lord, as she walks into the very early stages of womanhood, Lord, that you would open her eyes to as Naomi prayed, to see your ways, to know your truth, and to desire your life, Lord, in her, to grow deep within her heart and her mind, Father. Lord, that you would give her your strength and your power. Lord, that you would give her a beautiful voice in you, Lord, to speak your truth, to worship you, Lord. Thank you, God, for Esther. Thank you for what you're doing in her heart. We bless her tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we do pray for our, our little sister Esther, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, Lord, she... Jesus. Lord, she has great faith, Lord, and a strong stature, Lord. Lord, I pray that you continue to feed and to nourish her spirit within, Lord, that that um, that the strength of faith, Lord, be, be 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 merged with your love and kindness, Lord, that um, that you, Lord, are a person. You've been created in your image, and you designed it for us to be changed, to be like you. And so may Esther know that, Lord, more in her heart, in her life, as our brother Emmanuel shared, and also in the renewing of the mind, have the mind and the heart of our Lord and our God. So bless her, Lord, encourage her, I pray, for wisdom and understanding Lord that um, Lord that she does indeed bless her, her her parents her brothers her sisters Lord and that um, Lord that she um, have your joy Lord and your peace Lord and um, just that, that continues to grow more and more Lord in her life and so Lord indeed we as a family, Lord, bless her. In Jesus' name. Father, I do pray that your life would begin to break open in her inner man. Lord, that the, the inner mind and heart that you have placed within her would begin to flourish and take root in her way of thinking and her perspective in life. Lord, to make way for the life of your spirit so that it may grow and mature. Lord, becoming a, a beautiful yes. flower. Lord, a beautiful representation of, of your life and your goodness. So draw it out in her, Lord, the seed that you have planted. Water it 
Lord, and cause it to grow. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. bless it. Amen. 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 Do you have anything else? No. Um, Elijah, do you see anything today? Not really. Okay. okay. Let's wrap it up. So it's getting late. So. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Let's see. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I like that jacket. I like it too. <laughs> it's worth good one, actually, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you get another one. So I can a mini. <laughs> a few of them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, we will need a little bit of help with the table. Also, if possible.